investments in pharmaceuticals. He gave $170 million to a pharmaceutical operation that's shutting down, <laughs> which is a prime example. After, after eight years of this prime, this prime minister wasting our money, inflation is at 40-year highs. And now, home heating bills have doubled. Seniors wonder how they're going to keep the heat on because this tax is going to be triple, tripled, and triple under the NDP Liberal Coalition. Will the Prime Minister finally take responsibility for the misery he's put on household heating bills? And will he accept that we're going to keep the heat on to take the tax off? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, at the time we invested was to protect the health and safety of Canadians. At the time, Mr. Speaker, everyone in the country and Canadians watching today just watch this guy again. Everyone in this country understand that at the time we needed to invest in all families of vaccines. Today, Mr. Speaker, we're in solution mode. We want to protect the jobs of Medicago. We want to protect, obviously, the manufacturing facility and VIP. Mr. Speaker, Canadians know something out of the COVID. We have their back. We will continue to invest in the Canadian economy, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Canadians know that they don't have, this government doesn't have their back. The government has their hands in their back pockets. Yeah. That's what's happening. $170 million here for this uh, wasted investment, $54 million for the ArriveCan scam, and of course $2 billion invested in a company that doesn't actually exist. And who's paying for it? Well, people are now seeing the bills on their home heating, which has doubled higher gas prices. And of course, when you tax our farmers with a carbon tax and our truckers, they have to raise the price of the food that comes to our grocery stores. Will they finally back down from this crazy carbon tax scheme? Because we're going to keep the heat on until they take the tax off. The Honourable Minister for Families. Here we hear a lot of hot air coming from the Leader of the Opposition, but we don't hear a lot of solutions on this side of the House. We're actually focused on making sure that Canadians have the support that they need. Whether that was at the height of the pandemic when we made sure that Canadians could stay afloat. And guess what, Mr. Speaker, that's what the Leader of the Opposition is against. Or whether it is now when we are reducing child care fees by 50 percent across this country and the Conservatives voted against funding child care, Mr. Speaker. Or whether it's against whether it's the ch Canada Child Benefits helping nine out of ten Canadian families. Mr. Speaker, we're there for them. Conservatives just aren't there for Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister divides people. We saw it with his advisor against Islamophobia. He wanted to divide Quebecers and Canadians by supporting, once again, Quebec bashing. We see it again at the Official Languages Committee, where he sends his West Island MPs to bat against the protection of French. He wants to divide Quebecers by misinforming about the Charter of the French Language. Mr. Speaker, the role of a Prime Minister is not to divide people. Is his government going to call to order these federal members who are saying false things and saying, tell them that this is enough? The Honourable Minister of Canadian Heritage. Mr. Speaker, the Bloc was born to divide. That's their main objective. And here we're talking about a bill that will allow workers to work in French, and they're voting against it. A piece of legislation that will guarantee services in French, they're against it. More for French in Quebec and outside, they're going to vote against it. So when we talk about French and defending it, the Bloc are talking about out of both sides of their mouth, the Honourable Member. The dispute is within his Quebec caucus and not at the Bloc. La Bresse said this in this morning, the smoke and mirrors used by some of his colleagues is shameful. Montreal Island does not have a monopoly on language policy in Canada. Disinformation has no place in this debate. These are fair statements. How come it takes a member from Ontario to publish such things? How come we have not heard a single denunciation from a Quebec MP in the Liberal Party? Where are the Premier and his Quebec lieutenant when their colleagues are dragging the French language charter through the mud? The Honourable Minister of Official Languages. Mr. Speaker. Order. Order. 
The Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are the first government to recognize the French fact across the country, including in Quebec. We take our responsibility and have tabled a bill that has teeth to make sure that we do our fair share to protect French across our country, including in Quebec. Mr. Speaker, our government wants to do its fair share, and I hope that we will see a bill adopted as quickly as possible. Thank you. Vancouver Kingsway. Today's health summit, Canadians need this Prime Minister to champion public health care and stand against private for-profit delivery. Yeah. Right. Privatization is not innovation. Yeah. It drains workers from our public system, costs more, and allows queue jumping for the rich. It will make the crisis worse. Yes. Real innovation is better support for health professionals, shorter wait times in our hospitals, and access to care based on need. Will this Prime Minister assure Canadians that additional public dollars will go to public health care? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of health. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Our health system is experiencing significant challenges, and it's important that we work together to find best, the best solutions going forward. And that's why today the Prime Minister and the Minister of Health is sitting down with the, the premiers and the ministers of health from across this country. And our government remains ready to work with provinces and territories to further discuss priorities, actions, and results to improve the health services that Canadians rely on. That includes reducing backlogs and supporting our health care workers, enhancing access to family health services, improving mental health and substance use services, helping Canadians age with dignity closer to home and using health data and digital health more effectively. We'll always be there to support our universal public health care system. Thank you, Madam Minister. Well, member for Elmwood to Transcona. I didn't hear a word about standing up to privatization. I hope the minister is going to be able to do better after today's talks. Yeah. When this prime minister was looking for votes, he said he would do everything to defend, defend our public health care system. And now he's calling the tactic of privatizing our health care system innovation. Just the opposite. Let's be clear, privatization does not add workers to our public health care system. It removes them. Investment is needed to address this crisis by hiring more health care workers. Will the Prime Minister be clear today that the federal health funding cannot be used to privatize our health care system? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Perhaps my colleague didn't hear me when I said we'll always stand up for our fundamental uh, public universal health care. I'll say it again, we'll always stand up for our, our public universal health care. And in French, Mr. Speaker, our government is working with the provinces and territories to discuss priorities and results with respect to health care so we can enhance our health care system for all Canadians, particularly by reducing the backlog, uh, improving access to family services, improving services with respect to mental health and substance abuse and more. For Calgary Force Lawn. After eight years with this Liberal Prime Minister, Canadians are suffering more than ever. His out-of-control spending fueled 40-year high in inflation. Rents have doubled. Home heating has doubled. And even food inflation has gone up. He piled drove Canadians further by taking more off their paychecks and was going to take even more and cause even more suffering when he triple, triple, triples his failed carbon tax scam. Will the Prime Minister show some humility and take the tax off so Canadians can keep the heat on. The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Conservative politicians are making a lot of misleading claims about the price on pollution. The facts are that 70% of gas price increase is due to crude oil prices going up, largely because of Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. And another 25% of the price is the result of provincial taxes and refin refining margins. Now, we started off fairly well, and now it seems to be going, well, it's not, go it's not doing well. I'm just going to ask everyone to listen to the questions and listen to the, respons sp the, the, the responses so that we can all hear together. The Honourable Minister, from the top, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Conservative.